So we are going to go in here and spray our Fox body parts. The first thing we need to do is wipe everything down with wax and grease remover. So the wax and grease remover I am reusing is this product. Uh, it's 36700 by Vitek Wax and Grease Remover General Purpose. Um, any wax and grease remover will pretty much work. I know you can get these at like Napa, Riley's, Advance, stuff like that has wax and grease removers. It doesn't have to be that brand. I got mine in a spray bottle, which doesn't hardly, which doesn't hardly work, but it's there. Got myself a napkin. Got myself a paper towel, not a shop towel. You don't want anything that is going to create lint. Uh, you don't want anything that's going to leave lint on the panels or anything like that. So I buy my uh, uh, towels from the paint store because they're special, especially for painting and they don't leave behind lint. Lint is your biggest enemy in painting and will get all in your work. So what we're gonna do, I normally just spray mine on, basically wipe on, wipe off. So I spray mine on, get everything covered. Normally I do this um, with two hands, spray bottle in one hand, rag in the other, but I'm trying to hold the camera. And then we're just gonna wipe this down. Um, I was taught to wipe on, wipe off, but I actually don't. So I'm gonna teach y'all how I was taught. And then you can do it however you want. So they always told me, wipe on with one rag, wipe off with another rag. I don't do that though. Do whatever you wanna do. I'm just trying to relay you the message like I was relayed. So all this is doing is just making sure there's no wax or grease or anything like that on your panels, even though I know there is none on my panels. What I'm using it for is I just wet sand it out an area right there is I'm using it to clean the panels because these sat out overnight in the garage and uh, got dust all over them. So this is basically just how I wipe down my panels. I don't put water on them because this evaporates so fast and it takes off any you know possible wax and grease that's, that's on there, even though I know it's a clean surface because we've already painted primer on top of it. But if you're painting like a new piece that you don't have primer on or anything, then um, you know, you probably want to use it just in case anybody's hands had grease on them. I mean, even in this situation, uh, the guys here that I had helped carry this in, you know, if they were doing mechanic work right before, which I know they weren't, and they know better, but if your buddy was doing mechanic work or playing with tire shine, tire shine is a huge problem because it has silicon in it. If they were messing with something like that and then they give you a hand to move the parts, now they just put, you know, silicon all over your parts, which is gonna cause fish eyes and contamination, which is gonna make your paint job absolutely terrible and extremely hard to get rid of once you get it into your uh, painted product. So I'm gonna put the camera down and finish doing this because these fenders are a little hard to do with one-handed without holding them so they don't fall off the stand but I just wanted to go over that real fast. All right, so we are gonna come in here and drop down our gray sealer. So we have just that shade of gray sealer. Looks like that on paper, like that against white paper. So you can see it's a lot, it's a, it's a medium between a black and a white, obviously. White would make uh, your blue base coat too bright. Black would make your blue base coat too dark because it's under layer. So just like if you've ever, had a scuff mark or something on a wall and you go to paint over it with white paint, you can still see through it. Um, this is just VAP seal. So this is just something the local store mixes. I don't know if your store mixes it. Um, you know, I'm, I know you can order gray sealer, so it's not like you can't, but my local store mixes um, VAP seal to whatever shade you might need. All right, so we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna throw you all in my head and we're gonna spray these parts out.
All right, so we are gonna mix up our color. This is the same color we used for the shell of the car. That was the same uh, sealer we used for the shell. Uh, the sealer, you know, gets you a, a, the same equal foundation. So our paint color that we are shooting on this car, in case anybody's wondering, you wanna screenshot it and get the code. Uh, there's the name of it right there in the description and there's the OEM codes um, Yeah, that's uh That's the information on it for anybody that's asking. There's the color So we're gonna get this put in our paint gun. And I'm gonna throw you back on the head and we're gonna lay down some base coat So we are going to mix up our clear and then throw you on the head and get you in there and let's shoot some clear. So what we are shooting on this car is an Omni 270 uh, production clear. This is mixed at a 4 to 1 uh, ratio. Sometimes it will say it on your can. Sometimes you have to pull the data sheet. This does not say it on the can, but I know it's a 4 to 1 ratio. Uh, your clear coat we're shooting with is going to be a MH278, which is the slow production clear hardener. Um, and then the reducer we're shooting at is by Grow, and it's a 1380, also slow. So all of this is slow, reducer, and hardener. Um, you can mix these. You could go slow, medium if you had to, or medium, fast, you know, fast, medium, but you can't go slow, fast. So it has to be on a scale from slow, medium to fast. They have to be side by side. You can't jump a level. Um, or you can cause problems. So being it's a four to one ratio, your ratios are on the side of the cup. We went over this a couple times on the channel, but we have quite a few new people here. So these are all mixing ratios. Sometimes you won't find the ratio you need on the cup, and then you have to get creative and use math and use your brain. But we are doing a four to one to one ratio, meaning four parts clear, one part hardener, one part reducer. So if we wanted to fill up the cup to, let's say, since we're going all the way, you know, one, two, three, products we're going to look in our last column over here this is going to be the height of the finished mix okay so if you wanted half of this cup then you would approximately either pick a four or five meaning if you picked a four that you would step all the way down here for your clear and it would be four uh, parts clear one part um, hardener one part reducer okay being it's in the one column so four parts one part one part that's what that means these numbers match left to right because of the height. So you follow the track. You don't, you know, pour to six and then go to seven and then go to five. Well, you could go to five or go to seven again, but you stay on the same number as you're stepping through the columns. So every ratio is going to have numbers, you know, such as this one, you'd go six, 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 all the way across. If you were mixing to the six, if you were mixing to the two, the same thing, two, 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 two. Okay, got it. So we're going to pour up our clear. It's a four to one ratio. Um, so we are going into four to one to one column. We're going to pour. We're going to go ahead and pour all the way to a seven because I know I'm going to use it. Okay. So there is our first row. We're at our seven right here. Now we're going to pour our hardener up to the next seven. So I might run out. That's going to be the last drop of that hardener. So that one's empty. We're gonna have to grab some more here on the next, the next mix. We need to take the trash out. All right, our reducer, same thing. We're going to pour to the number seven because that is gonna be one part because it is in the one part column. 
that's it. Now, normally on our flip cars, we would now add a accelerator, which I do not have with me today. Um, we'd add an accelerator to kick it off uh, extremely fast. We are not kicking this off. Uh, we're letting this thing take its time. Uh, when I do an accelerator, I do about seven minute flash time between each coat. And for this clear with no accelerator, I'm gonna do a 10 minute flash time. So the longer your flash time is, then the less likely you are to run the clear. But the um, if it goes too long, then you could have um, adhesion problems and you could delaminate between the coats. So the best way to check it is to go in there with your finger and actually touch uh, some tape. Uh, you know, if your clear coat or your painted panels here, then touch your tape. And when it's pulling strings, when it's stringy under there, that is when it's time to go in and recoat again. So you don't want it slippery. You want it where it's starting to actually tack up and feel sticky. So we're going to grab a strainer and just put this in our paint gun. I'm going to throw y'all on my head and we are going to go in there and make our passes. Lunch is up. Let's go in here and see what we got. We sprayed these and then got out of here for lunch. Let's see if I got any runs. It's always like a uh, surprise to come in here and check to see if you've ran anything or if you have any repairs. After you sit down and eat, you're feeling good and you got your stomach all nice and stuffed. And then you come in here and it ruins your day. So it looks good. I don't see any flaws. She looks like glass, man. These things are going to be easy to cut them up because they're so slick already. They really don't need to be cut and buffed. Forgot to undo that tape. So what we did was we shoot them and then I actually, as you can see, I dropped my paper and you can see it on there, you know, pulled the paper off so that 
it doesn't stick and build up an edge. If you don't drop your paper, then right here, basically this clear is just stacking up on top of here, okay? So it wants to run off the edge sometimes, not always, and you're blowing it like this into the edge on some passage, you know, you're going like this to get your edge covered. And so then your edge sticks to your tape and it bridges. So the clear coat's on the tape, clear coat goes up, it's on the edge, and the clear coat's on top of the panel. So it bridges itself onto the clear. If you don't drop, well, the clear bridges itself onto the door, I mean. Um, if you don't drop your tape after, as soon as you get done, then that little edge is not gonna roll over and it will actually dry onto the tape. And then when you go to pull it, you'll actually be able to fill a little sharp edge. Not like a sharp edge that's gonna cut you, but you'll be able to fill, you know, the clear coat buildup. And sometimes it's so bad that it will actually, when you go to untape it, it will actually rip the clear off the, off the panel. Um, so that's the reason why normally we try to drop the tape and normally I get all of the tape out of places like this, but uh, got out of here and forgot, which is not that important on an area like this because you could take a razor blade and gently cut around it to relieve it. But on the edge, you want your edge nice and rolled. Um, yeah, I think they turned out really good, man. Like for straight out the gun, no cut, no buff. That's the quality of it. So it's got a little bit of trash in it, but nothing that like I didn't expect. But I think these things are gonna be super easy to, uh, to buff out. Man, that looks good. It's so much easier to paint smaller panels like this than working the whole entire uh, car. Um, it's, you always find a lot more joy, or at least I do, in painting, you know, just a panel versus a whole car. So as you can see, these things look phenomenal. So this makes my job a whole lot easier being they're gonna cut and buff so fast. I mean, we'll be able to just roll this thing straight with like 2,500, so. Turned out good. All right, so we got our Fox Body stuff painted earlier, you know, out of the booth. Um, looking amazing. We're going to get these wet sand and a buff tomorrow, which will be Thursday. Uh, moving right along with this, Ed's pushed this over to the side for a minute. Uh, everything is 1500 on the shell and 2500 now. So the quarters are 25, 1525, roost 1525, deck list 1525, uh, so on, everything. So we're good to go on this for buffing on Thursday. Uh, all the cows are cut and buffed. Um, so Thursday and we're gonna get this buffed or cut this afternoon. I might be able to start buffing this afternoon I'm not sure it's gonna be close um, But we'll get the top of this we're only cutting this spot spot So when it's up and on the car the top flat is your reflection you see we're just gonna knock out 50% of the orange pill 50% of the trash We're not taking that down too low because you don't want to cut through the doors will be wet sanded from here up Fenders will be the tops and from the molding up, uh, you know, same thing on them. You get the drift. So should be buffing for Thursday. We're sitting amazing. We're sitting good. Uh, it's tight. It's tighter than I wanted to be on this project, but I don't feel super overwhelmed behind. Tomorrow, we're also painting the hood and painting the front bumpers. I'm going to try to get them blocked this afternoon is the goal. So we are going to get our last two pieces into paint. Uh, you know, we just got done with lunch. Been blocking on this thing all morning. This bumper right here alone probably got... Between the other day and today, I probably got five hours in just this front bumper easily uh, on prep work. So, you know, yesterday we got all these parts painted. Uh, got to move on to wet sand and buff. So our last two pieces are our puzzle. Well, technically three is the hood, the front bumper, and the gas door. So we're going to spray the gas door today too. So five hours includes all of these little freaking trenches every single one you got to get down inside of man this is stuff is a freaking nightmare you got to sand all this out this this one we're not done with 100 percent i'm almost ready to put this thing into um uh soap and water and paint it but man just the amount of time it takes to get inside all of these grooves by hand uh get that edge sharp get that edge you know decently sharp uh, even though that's on the bottom, you still don't want it to look messy. Um, you know, work all these fins, scuff everything out, man. These bumpers take a ton of freaking time. So I'm going to get this finished out. Uh, the last bit of details on this, the hood is pretty much all scuffed out. All my edges are rolled. I have not sanded in this corner. It looks like I have, but all I've done is ran the DA up to it. 
Um, when I go to scotch break this with soap and water, I'll then take my finger with scotch break and run it really good in that groove right there just to smooth that groove out a little bit. Um, but besides that, the hood's done. A few details on the front bumper. Sand the gas door and then put these things through freaking paint. And then move on uh, later this afternoon. We will be, you know, doing a little bit of buffing. Maybe not no buffing day, actually. Because I have a feeling that I'm getting ahead of myself. And if I say I'm going to buff, I'm actually not going to make it. And I'll just be able to wet sand all these out. So we at least probably want to get all these wet sanded out. That way um, I can mess with it some on Friday. Possibly buffing. But if not, that way I have Monday and Tuesday for nothing but buffing and assembly which uh puts me you know sitting sitting good so every day i think i'm gonna get fathered and i'm gonna get because this stuff just takes so freaking much time but uh everything's looking extremely extremely good